Hello and welcome to the Orally Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We talk everything animation here, including DuckTales, which we'll be getting into right now. Uh, I'm your host, Alex Bonilla, and today I'm joined by Michelle Andor. Hello. And Steve Zek. Ooh, I'm an English ghost. <laughs> today, we'll right, be, today we'll be talking golf, mystery, <laughs> and DuckTales. Uh, lot, lots of Scotland in this in these two episodes, so... <laughs> <laughs> okay, I lasted longer than the, the last time yeah, I tried you did. this. But... Yeah. A plus for effort. <laughs> that, that, thanks for the effort, man. Uh, right. ex- execution, I, I'm sure, is very lacking, but it, it was. Yeah. It's always worth right. a try. It was like, a fun time. Yeah. And, admittedly, it. this this was a very Scottish episode. You have to admit. Yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> but um, t- today, in particular, we'll be discussing the latest two episodes of Ducktales. Uh, uh, the missing links of Morsher and McMystery and McDuck McManor. Ooh. Ooh. So many mix, man. L- oh. Lots of mix. And there, I think there was a McDonald mentioned in the uh, in the golf episode too. So l- lots really? of lots of mix. There might have been, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Like one of one of their ancestors was McDonald, I remember. <laughs> no, Don Black Donald McDuck. Something like that, but, yeah. we'll, but uh, yeah. If you want to catch up on previous uh, um, previous Ducktales episodes that we've covered, you can always uh, find our, our previous discussions at overlyanimated dot com, or you can subscribe to our podcast at, at overlyanimated dot com slash iTunes, uh, wherever you listen to us, whether that be on iTunes or on your preferred podcatcher. We always appreciate any ratings or reviews you want to leave us. But uh, yeah, t- today we'll be go- going through these uh, two episodes in particular. Um, Michelle, of, of these two, the, uh, what stood out to you? How do you feel about them compared to the last time we talked about DuckTales? What were your general impressions here? Um. Well, I was very surprised by how much I enjoyed The Missing Links of Moonshire because when I heard it was going to be a golf episode, I was like, oh, no, we're going to have to watch golf a whole episode. Why would they do that in cartoon form? Why are you so but down actually, on golf? <laughs> but actually, I ended up enjoying it quite a bit more than McMystery at McDuck McManor. So you, you never know what you're going to get. So you actually sit down and watch it. But I actually, I, I feel, like, honestly, like, pretty freaking high on The Missing Links of Moonshire. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's definitely, like, maybe my top six episodes wow. of the whole show so far. Yeah, no, I just, I really, I had a good time. I'm glad Scrooge actually, like, had some development and, you know, did a good thing. He learned a thing. And, I mean, the Kelpies were so good, too. <laughs> and... Yeah, I felt like all the, like, the triplets were well utilized, and, you know, Webby was awesome. So, yeah, there was a lot to love in that episode in particular. And, and, you know, the other one was, like, fine. I kind of, like, saw the twist coming. Not the whole twist. I didn't know Duckworth was really going to be in it. But I, like, kind of figured out everything else pretty early on. So it was a lot more of just waiting around and seeing when everyone else was going to figure it out, too. Okay, and interesting. Um, Steve, uh, do you, do you have a take on w- which episode stood out more to you of these two? Mm, I don't know. It's kind of even. Um, McMystery at McDuck Manor had the return of Duckworth. That's noteworthy. And um, the mystery links of Moonshire. That it's had a the more more sure. I, I think more sure. I'm not good with titles. No, no, that Michelle one... had it off too, and it's admittedly a very Scottish oh, word. But... How do you know, Alex? <laughs> that one because they said it in the show. <laughs> oh, I didn't. Oh, okay. Well, that I guess that's fair. Well, that episode had, like Michelle mentioned, the Kelpies, who I love, which is a yeah. reference voiced by Tara Strong and Andrea Lipman, two voiceover actresses on My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. That's an intentional reference. Oh, you don't show. say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm sure Michelle, oh, you saw the movie, so you kind of rec- you do you recognize the voices? Sound I mean, yeah, I I start because of Tara Strong. I start to hear Twilight Sparkle's voice everywhere. Like I have to watch Unikitty for part of my job, and like I can't like unhear Twilight Sparkle whenever Unikitty talks now. So it yeah, it's just a thing that happens. Yeah. I, I for one recognize Andrea Libman at is her iconic role as Emmy on Dragon Tales. That was a very there you go. Role. <laughs> I remember that show. Yeah, but yeah, but um, that that one had pretty much 
showcased the entire like main cast except for Mrs. Beakley. Like everyone and Donald, they were all like in it. In like, McDuck McManor, you mean? Well, uh, that not talking about the uh, golf episode. Oh, 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 you're saying Beakley and Donald weren't in it because they no. were in the other episode for like. Yeah, yeah. Moments. Well, Donald had a really small little cameo in this and that and McDuck mystery episode, but I did like some moments, like even though they're barely in it in the in the Ma- mansion episode. Webby and Mrs. Beakley they had their moments, like at the beginning and end of the episode. I just love how Webby is so nonchalant about seeing. A ghost. She's like, "Hey, Duckworth." It's like, like no yeah. big deal. Very classic Webby, <laughs> admittedly, in that episode for the brief moment. Oh, and, I, and, I, and I kind of love the dynamic Duckworth and Mrs. Beakley has at the end. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that scene. I yeah. do want to talk about. That. <laughs> there's something. But, there's history there. Yeah, but um, <laughs> j- just uh, keeping on, on general impressions for now. I, I also really enjoyed missing links with Morsher. Like. Uh, uh, the whole sports commentary shtick, like, it especially appeals to me just because I'm a sports fan. And so, like, the whole, all the sports commentary jokes really landed with me. But also, I agree that, like, all the nephews got used more or less in their own different ways. Like, none of them really got sidelined throughout this episode, which is kind of impressive considering it's a wide cast. Uh, mm-hmm. Glomgold has funny moments as well. Uh, the the po- the ponies are <laughs> kelpies, I guess they're called in, in, yeah. in this episode. But they they have their funny moments popping in and out. <laughs> so it, it's a it, it's admittedly a bit of a predictable storyline, like that they end up fighting and then they make up at the end. Like at, at least I make, didn't even care though. Like yeah, it, like, it is probably predictable, yeah. but I didn't like mind at all the whole time. Oh. I was too engaged. Right. Like oh. I, I enjoyed for the humor aspects. I don't think there's as much character development because I feel like we've oh. seen this already between ah. Scrooge and Dewey, like in previous episodes. It's like the first episode, the first episode all over again. Yeah. The, the, we, oh no, is that true? Yeah, we oh, we've no. already had this of Scrooge doubting Dewey and Dewey like fighting through and then coming to see each well, other's sides. Well, here, but like the point right, is here, that that's here, a common story, but it's still funny of an episode. But, so. but I think it differs though from the pilot that it showed role reversal. I think Dewey in this one has his head on right. It, it screws the one with the problem in the pilot. It was Dewey who was just too eager, too a little overconfident in his abilities that got him in trouble. And here Dewey was on point. And Scrooge was the one who really needed that development. So it's that's kind of, true. It's it's a little different in that sense. Like oh, one side is even, in the wrong. Oh, and I love, I love how uh, that one line: "Are we in Webby Heaven?" And of course, the part when they said, "Oh, like animals wearing clothes." I mean. <laughs> So yeah, funny. Yes, yes. Uh, there's some <laughs> meta jokes in there, but uh, yeah, yeah l- l- let's get into these ponies. I feel like <laughs> these are the yeah, let's just that... talk about the kelpies. I, I, yeah, I know they're... they they really stand out. We have. I, uh, let I me just find wanna... their names here. There's a uh, Br- Briar is the pink one, voiced by Tara Strong, and Bramble is the purple one, that's voiced well, by Andrea Lindman, who is Pinkie Pie. Yeah, who are we kidding? Wow. Though, I'm for me, they're Twilight Sparkle and Fluttershy. That's who I think them as because using their voices. But they're so cute, even though they're murderous characters. You kind of overlook that. Like, they're so adorable. They wouldn't keep harping on the whole water thing. They'd be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're just really eager to get wet. You really <laughs> like swimming, you guys. That's all. They seem, they seem like they'd be great characters on Adventure Time. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I can see. The, 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 they do have a cute fat pony already on Adventure Time, though. <laughs> Uh, also, I, I, they they keep saying like, "Oh, you guys are no fun." Because, like, no nobody falls yeah. for their tricks. So, uh, it's yeah. a nice. They're very casual there. about the whole murder thing the yeah. entire time, which that's is what great. Make, that's what makes it so cute. <laughs> yeah, cute, cute murderesses are always in demand. That's <laughs> by someone. Uh, <laughs> We we have this whole arc of them doing golf in this episode. That there's a tournament against Glomgold. Uh, what do you guys think of Glomgold in this episode? I feel like we're uh, he like he's very Scottish. That's his character. But, yeah. Um, yeah, that's his whole character. His whole character. Um, mm-hmm. Any thoughts in general on him or moments that stood out? 
Yeah. I was like pretty I was like more all right with him this episode than in a while and I'm not sure why that is. Maybe it's because he's just like trying so hard and he's giving me like memories of Boxman. Oh yeah. He's really bad at golf, but he got better because of Green Shirt's like suggestions. And I don't know, he wasn't just like obnoxious. He was actually like keeping up with Scrooge and Blue Shirt the whole time, which is pretty impressive because you get the impression that they're actually kind of good at golf. So Oh, yeah, he's like, uh, he's hilarious. He's so he's less menacing than the original series, and I do love how how like how he's only his own worst enemy. Like the beginning, he hired yeah. this golf expert and then immediately fired him. Like, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a random tiger too. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, like well, Glenn I, I mean, is... is it because of Tiger Woods though? Oh, oh, I didn't get that. Uh, that's a good mm, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that's what's going on. I, I, that does seem like that. He looks like Tony the Tiger, but like, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, as someone who sort of follows sports, that that joke would have landed a little better seven years ago when he was actually good at golf. But you know, oh no, <laughs> I don't follow sports at all. It's Tiger Woods, not actually. Not, not really, not actually, yeah, like, I think you're being Aww. too fair, too nice. Actually, maybe 10 years ago when he was good. Yeah, yeah. It, it's been a while but since Tiger Woods has been the pinnacle of golf. But hey, Glomgold would know that, would he? <laughs> just go, go to a random oh golf God. club. Like, he just wants to win. Yeah, exactly. And the, the running gag with him is that he hires um, L- Louis to be his caddy and he has to keep paying him to do things whenever. So I love the very good running gag. Up money. That's so mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and... Uh, um, they they go through this whole course. I, I want to say like the, these uh, these holes in particular remind me a lot of my experience playing Mario Golf to- Toadstool Tour, where like all these holes were very creative um, <laughs> design, or like the waterfalls like pulling the ball in. Oh. There's like little islands where the yeah. holes are. It, it's and, uh, very cartoonish, but, but I, I I think golf would be more fun if you were since, able to play in places like this. Oh, so yeah, you meant, for sure. Since you mentioned that, it just remind me this this episode. Had two elements, two two particular episodes of Gravity Falls, you know the uh, the golf episode, and of course the uh, the one with the jerk unicorn. Because that, yeah, yeah, mini golf. that's that's true. They do have a mini golf episode, and there there is a jerk unicorn in a different episode. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All thoughts. This is real golf, like that. There, <laughs> this is it. This, this is no mini golf. golf. Well, when they go on the uh, on that magical course at the, you know, yeah, it's like climber. supernatural golf, that the be, most yeah. official kind of golf yeah. ever. That becomes yeah. mini golf. <laughs> but I kind of character. I most. I kind of want to see is what well, how Black Donald McDuck looks like. Yeah, he got mentioned very br- briefly in passing here as like the inventor of golf, uh, and then he apparently—I guess it was—he was so good that they—he uh, was so good that Scotland had to ban golf to keep him from winning. Is that was that the explanation? <laughs> but uh, yeah, so they they mentioned their ancestors being the inventors of golf, very Scottish. Uh, also, a notable character here, Launchpad, as usual, being his funny self. Uh, I-, I enjoyed his contribution. I enjoyed to him. <laughs> like he livened up the golfness mm-hmm. of the episode, so I thought he was really well utilized. Actually, that was one of the first things I noticed. I'm like, oh man, I'm kind of glad Launchpad's here, or else this would be boring. Well, but then he, the episode Huey, got anyway. Huey is trying so, to like, give yeah. serious commentary. <laughs> like, uh, here, here we are at the esteemed yeah. tournament. Are you ready for some golf? <laughs> <Launchpad>. <laughs> Dad, like cannot read the room, but it is—he's yeah. such a treasure in this. Speaking of which, also Webby, she also couldn't tell what kind of sport this was. She was trying to be number one yeah. fan girl yeah, with a well, bullhorn and the and the yelling like "Go Scrooge, go!" The fireworks yeah. that went <laughs> off at the wrong time. Yeah. Webby pulling out the vuvuzela, another joke from five years ago, but you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, well, Webby is her very um, hyper- hyperactive self. Um, not uh, doesn't have too much to do in this episode, but like she's just very hyper. That's kind of her thing. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but by the end, uh, they get to the end of this course, and it turns out that the mist that they're racing against turns everybody to stone. And so you get this whole discussion of them getting to the ball, and the Webby is like, uh, "We need to support." Uh, um, <laughs> Yeah, it's like, like literal support, not this, emotional. This not isn't the time for life lessons. Oh, she yeah. said that. 
<laughs> so she said, actually, not everything has to be a life lesson. <laughs> right. But then at the very end, Launchpad is like, Scrooge, let, let go of his ego. And was able to embrace being a mentor. It's like we, we end with a life lesson anyway. Oh, he just exactly. he just spelled out the moral of the episode. Yeah. <laughs> but but yeah, I, I'd say that was it, it's not a very substantive episode in terms of story, but it was a very enjoyable episode, and uh, that that that's one of the things. It, I guess I'll, just a little bit to talk about, like the the last two episodes we talked about were fairly story heavy, and now we're going back to very joke joke heavy episodes. And I do feel like Disney is trying to keep this balance of like yeah. one batch of plot, one batch of funny, well, and like keeping them separate, right? Well, well, we've, I, we've seen that in a lot of shows. I mean, like, KO does that, Steve Universe does it. I feel like Gravity yeah. Falls did it, too, to some extent, so... Well, well yeah, the other big difference, though, like Mr. McDuck Manor does, is a game-changer. Something may have changed at the very end. Well, sure. okay, well, let's talk about that. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's not something major, I would say. Yeah, so, like, the, the basic <laughs> rundown of this is that they're setting up a party for uh, for, Scro- for Scrooge, his, his birthday, um, Huey decides to make this a whole mi- mystery party thing. Very, su- you've mentioned the Gravity Falls parallel. Also, this is very similar to an Adventure Time episode where they're also everybody's disappearing. Oh, well, that's true. Well, that's to, true. Well, to be <laughs> fair, it wasn't Huey's plan to be a mystery party. It just, yeah, yeah it, it, it just happens. He just rolls with it when yeah. it's yeah. happening. It, it yeah. ends up being Scrooge who's manufacturing this entire mystery, and at the end, um, there's a, a introduction of Ghost Duckworth, who apparently it was a character from the previous show as well. Um, and also, leave it to Scrooge, though he has probably more enemies than friends. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about yeah. the enemies later. But yeah, for, but, first, uh, with Duckworth, do do yeah. we think that he's actually a character? Is this a one-off joke thing? Uh, I, any theories on how he's going to be involved here? I don't see why not. I mean, why it's gonna be a one-off thing? I mean, just you just have a ghost butler. It doesn't really change the flow of the show. Personally, I liked it though. If it's only the people who live in the manor can see him, only like if Scrooge, like Mrs. Beakley, Webby, the nephews, you know, only they can see the ghost. But if anyone outsiders come in, they can't see him. Maybe they could do that. Yeah, he he could be confined to the mansion. Uh, the, yeah. the, that that would limit his appearances, though. But we'll yeah. see. Uh, Michelle, <laughs> any thoughts on Duckworth as a character? I think he's gonna <laughs> stick around. But again, because he's a ghost and he's a butler, the the show can use him pretty sparingly. So I agree with Steve. It's not really gonna change much about the show. It'll just be like an extra layer, and hopefully, we'll see more with him and Miss Beakley. Yeah. So the, there's a very inter- there's a very interesting line where, like, at the very end, uh, Mrs. Beakley comes back because they they escaped. So they realize that Scrooge and parties are, don't mix. So they come back, and Duckworth is just like, oh, do you always keep the mansion this dirty or this messy? And Mrs. Mm. Beakley is just like, I prefer it when you were dead. (laughs) (laughs) I'm starting to wonder, perhaps, is this Duckworth, was he also a spy previously in in, early in his life, perhaps? That's one possibility. I just think that Mrs. (laughs) Beakley has Duckworth's job, and so now feels threatened that Duckworth has come back. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they they def got some bad blood going on. Yeah, but, yeah. But, well, I, I, I do say, want um, more Beakley in this show. We haven't makes, gotten her in a long time. Let me. Uh, yeah, same. Yeah, I want to yeah. see more of Miss Beakley. Let's start too. Let me explain what was Mrs. Beakley's j- job on the old show. Duckwork was the butler. Mrs. Beakley was the nanny. And I'm not sure who exactly did the housekeeping, but I think Duckwork. I've seen her in some episode do vacuuming and stuff. So perhaps you have a. You have something going there, Alex, with throwing threatening by his old job. Yeah, and the, the, they, <laughs> right now, the Mrs. Beakley seemed to be in charge of just everything around the house. But so it does seem though that they. Duties. But it does seem they were co-workers at one point, so. Yeah, yeah well, we'll, we'll delve into their history at some I, point. Um, I, uh, other. I, oh, char- I want to see Donald's reaction to Duckworth's return. Uh, yeah, so, so br- brief mention of Donald here at the at the, the beginning while Mrs. Beakley yeah. and Webby are describing them leaving. Donald just like runs out the door. <laughs> I, I didn't even catch what he said. Was he saying things while he left? 
Uh, I couldn't understand him. I was like, oh no, Donald. I, I keep hoping the show is going to give us like I subtitles know. just for his dialogue not, because not I could to, really use them. Yeah. To be I, fair, the, 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 the Spear of Selene had very understandable Donald. But. I think I he was just frantic. because he was, yeah, he was frantic, so he was talking right. faster. And if he right. talks fast, it's like over for me. I just and, can't. And I think the <laughs> I point that, understand them. And the point of that scene, though, the boys are not supposed to know what is going on until it's revealed later in the scene that it's Scrooge's birthday. So, you know, it can't be clear to us because it can't be clear to the nephews what he's saying. <laughs> okay, that, that's one explanation <laughs> for it. Well, why are they keeping the secret from the nephews? Like, the, the, <laughs> is the birthday really such a, a thing that needs to be hidden? If, if this could have all been avoided if they had told him beforehand, like, don't do this. <laughs> I don't know. I know. I don't think it's going to stop Huey from doing what he wanted to do. Maybe not. Maybe That's they would have had time true. to make a better guest list at least. Oh yeah, like we said, you only gave me one hour. One exactly. Hour. We, we we keep going to that joke as All the explanation. All three people he hates the most. Yeah. yeah. So we have the villains here in very um, bad costumes, like from the very beginning. I know, beginning, we know who them. they are. This is yeah. the second we see them. Yeah, so you yeah. have um, a Ma-, Ma Beagle showing up here. You got uh, Mark Beeks and you got Glomgold. Um, so the way this plays out is that what Dewey, at, I mean, so, yeah, D- Dewey, Huey, and Louie are wrecked into this whole party stuff. Um which one becomes the DJ? <laughs> oh, Dewey. D- D- Dewey is the one who, who becomes blue DJ shirt. Daft Duck. Yeah, yeah well, blue shirt is easier. <laughs> I'll just take the Michelle method. Uh, <laughs> I think she knows their names. She's just going to call them by sh- blue shirt. Yeah. I she don't has remember it. their names because like, I keep just wanting to use their shirts. Their shirts <laughs> seem so much more practical than they used to me. I mean, they're so consistent. Well, but see, like, I don't I don't need a name here because his name in this episode is DJ Daft Duck. So. Exactly, and I love that they made a Daft Punk reference. It's so good. Yeah, he keeps playing sound effects on his guitar and only responds to his DJ name. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, at, at some point, he manages to, to make a Glomgold sample on the on the spot, like, bless me bagpipes or something like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah but he, he's got a lot of little moments in, in this episode, but uh, Huey is the one that's most obsessed with the party planning, and um, he has contracted this illusionist by the name of Nick Nocturne, spelled with two Ks because I made the C's disappear. <laughs> I liked that line, too. Yeah. I thought that was great. <laughs> that was a pretty good line. Uh, and uh, Scrooge uh, begrudgingly goes up to be part of the trick. The bots explodes, and he's disappeared. And because his wallet is left behind it is why everybody thinks like he must have been kidnapped or something. Mm-hmm. And so Huey goes along with this whole, oh, mm-hmm. it's, it's a mystery, and we and we got to figure out who kidnapped him. And so we do the classic one-by-one one revealing stuff. Yeah. Um we begin with uh, Nick Nocturne revealing that he's Black Art Beagle. Oh, <laughs> and, poor Black poor Art. And he begins explaining the entire plan of Ma Beagle. And it's like Ma Beagle is trying to get us. <laughs> like, stop explaining the plan. Yeah. I know. No, oh, he's yeah. Well, he just wants to. He just wants mom's like approval and love. He he is such a Daryl. I was gonna say, is huh. this like is this like a mommy issue counterpoint yeah. to Capo Daryl's daddy issue? And it's similar that he. Was plan he planned to betray her like yeah, yeah. he did the and parallel you know, grows even stronger and that is like really like that's a big thing here in, in Ducktales because on the old show well, it, was, it was unheard of for the Beagle boys to ever betray Ma Beagle they were so loyal to her like it's just that was a daring little move to do in the old show in the comics they were always like loyal to Ma Beagle so that took some guts. Is Ma Beagle the only competent villain we have? <laughs> not sure if he's um, that competent, but compared to the rest, um, yeah, I think so. Compared yeah, to <laughs> com- com- comparatively <laughs> speaking, compared to the list we have, I yeah. mean, I hope um we get more Magica. I mean, because I feel like she's probably oh, yeah. competent. We just haven't seen her yet. Yeah, right, right. Oh, and I thought for a moment when we saw um, it's the shadow of uh, Dewey's DJ outfit. I thought that was Magica for a second because <laughs> we saw the shadowy. It looked like her for a bit. Yeah, well, we're just desperate to get Magica yeah, maybe, and Orlina back in this show yeah, just, at some and, point. And, and why would she invite the party? Um, I don't know, maybe she doesn't know her personally, but 
at least the nephews know her. I mean, I, I well, mean, see, Lena doesn't show up if Webby's not here. That, that, yeah. That's the key to this. Mm. Yeah. 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 But uh, still, I have a chance to crash a party just to cause some chaos like she did in her debut episode. And I don't know. But I, we just didn't have time for that, you know. It's just that wasn't a Lena plot. This was uh, more of a Huey plot. Yeah, well, I guess we can talk about Huey in general. He kind of rubbed me the wrong way in this episode. Like, very annoying, but uh, I, I don't know about you Alex. guys. Alex, which yeah. one is Huey? The red the one. Red <laughs> one. Oh! <laughs> the one that's actually organizing this whole party and being oh, very yeah. no, scheduling. Oh, yeah, no, he was not. The dead, he, the, he was the, just kind of blurring ahead with yeah. the whole plan. He, he's pretty much the... Uh, Dead Star Trek character walking. Uh, what? Uh, what is that? It's, 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 it's a red, red shirt, shirt joke. Red shirt. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. But, oh, uh, right then. Yeah. But yeah, he does like the whole like we, we got to follow a strict schedule. Like reminding me of that SpongeBob episode where he's planning his oh, party yeah. too. <laughs> oh so, yeah. yeah, it's, it's six These o'clock. Poor people should not be in break. charge of parties. Oh, the trope of yeah. just want the party to be perfect. Yeah, gotta be scripted. So look, what, when has a scripted party down to the exactly. minute ever worked? <laughs> I know. Exactly, you suck the fun out with all the planning. Mm, yeah. yeah, it's like it, like I said, that's uh, such a um, tr- big trope in animation. Uh, now, w- one character that I did really enjoy, Mark Beeks, in this episode was pretty good. I think uh, pro- he didn't have much screen time, but like he apparently has hacked into the security system just to get a video of Scrooge walking into a door. And I love I love Ma's reaction to him. Like, oh yeah, yeah. he's like, how is this one of Scrooge's nemesis? <laughs> he's insulted. He's insulted that he's part of the club. Yeah, yeah but, but then like he just walks into a door too and falls down. And at some later on in the episode, he gets thrown out by the demon. He's just like hashtag YOLO hashtag FOMO. Ah! It's like he, he's got it. Even while he's dying, he's got to throw out the hashtag. So yeah. solid branding. Yeah. Um, and then Glomgold explains the his plan of just like putting a bomb in a box, and it just never went off. <laughs> yeah, that's not very creative. Yeah, no, not not not, not the best word. He could have done better. <laughs> No, like yeah. they, they show this flashback of him working on stuff like he tries to attach a shark to a chainsaw i think at some point in, yeah. in like the scorpions yeah it all backfires he, he needs donald back to maybe be a little more confident again <laughs> yeah what happened to his crew <laughs> <can't help> <laughs> yeah like he had an entire crew in that Atlantis well, he episode. Fu- he they all tried to murder him. them. He doesn't trust them enough with a task as important he, as this. He, Only he can he, divulge the secret I, plan to kill I, Scrooge for good. I think it's implied he fired them because he tried to kill him, so. Yeah. Uh, he I feel like he would have gotten more then. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm talking but they were they didn't come up with the ideas, though. Donald was the ideal duck. That's who he needs. He needs the idea duck. <laughs> Um, but yeah, well, once everybody's told their plans, uh, the uh, Huey is uh, still obsessed with trying to find the murderer, I mean the kidnapper. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. And uh, but then the the lights go on and off, and everybody keeps disappearing, and uh, like there's just letters of try again. And uh, Nick Nocturne th- reveals that he ca- has like demonic powers, I guess, <laughs> like summoned a demon. Uh, mm-hmm. But it, it turns out that after a big chase sequence and the demon consuming Nick Nocturne, I'm not as good as I thought I was. Mm-hmm. But um, they get chased by the demon. They find a, a secret entry to an office and they find out that Scrooge was behind all of this, uh, watching through security cameras. And uh, and yeah, D- Duckworth is revealed to be the, the demon, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so yeah, like... Um, I'd say that the the golf episode was funnier, but like the, this one ha- has its moments as well. I I think some people stand out more than others. Uh, I feel like H- Huey himself dra- drags it down a little bit, but yeah. Uh, ooh, shots fired, Alex. <laughs> yeah, yeah. H- Huey yeah. as a character has just not had moments. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think. Is he the-, the one who's really into the Junior Wood? Chuck yes. Scouts. Okay. Yeah. What thought, else does he have going for him? Then? What else does he do? I thought he had his moments in the Terra Terraforming episode, but yeah, right. He, he, that he's was got, like, like the, the one science. he really shone with Webby. Uh, also, admittedly, the, the golf episode, he was really good as the commentator. I think that's like, true. The, dead, the dead was, like, this the works. Side. Yeah. 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 So see, yeah, but like when he, they try to give him character moments, it doesn't really 
feel feel. I right, thought the but... one character that really just didn't really get the shaft in this episode was Louis. All he was, he just kind of was the straight man to Huey's craziness. Yeah, well, Louis is mm-hmm. the voice of logic here. Like, hey, just let everything flow. Hey, yeah. well, why are you being so obsessed? And uh, Huey <laughs> ignores him, so. It's... <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, but but yeah, and uh, I I think Lu- um D- Dewey does well as the DJ, so like he, he he's probably yeah. the, the best of the nephews in this episode. Yeah, so, Poor so guy Goofy- kept trying to take his helmet off, couldn't do it. Yeah, yeah. Though I thought that is what Dewey's part. That could easily have been a launch pad plot too. I could see him just also going a little crazy, getting caught up in the. Uh, DJ thing, but yeah. Well, where, where does Launchpad go when it's birth? When it's uh, Scrooge's birthday, we didn't see him yeah. escaping the mansion. Well, he, I think he's dumb enough to not be scared off by his birthday. So, um, and poor Launchpad. He was. He could have just been like asleep yeah. in the plane the whole yeah. time and not knowing it was Scrooge's birthday. Yeah, at all. but true, true. yeah, all the uh, all the enemies get invites, but not him. <laughs> or he could just be busy like watching yeah. a dark a Darkwing Duck marathon yeah. or something. <laughs> Uh, but but yeah, so I I, I think that that's pre- there, there's not too much deep to talk about with these episodes. Like that they're they're funny episodes, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see if Duckworth shows up again. That's yeah. like the, yeah. the one thing that might mm-hmm. carry over. Well, we um, do he- have yeah, we do got uh, seemingly some plot stuff coming up next time. I'm excited yeah. about. Yeah, Especially, if we go with the pattern of like two episodes plot, two episodes fu- like just focus on jokes, so maybe that's two episodes plot again. We we might uh, be settling yeah. into a pattern. I do. If I did get Disney schedules it right. The Ducktales Reddit and the Ducktales Wiki gave me some spoilers over characters that will appear in the next two episodes. Okay, so yeah, avoid I'm just those so, yeah, places plus, if you yeah. don't want spoilers. Oh yeah, do, do you guys think the ponies will show up again, or is that a is that also a one off? Uh, it's probably a one off. I feel like that's likely to be a one off. Especially, uh, especially since Andrea Lipman, she's more can- exclusively more Canadian voice actress. They can get Tara Strong back any time to voice anything, but uh, I mean, they don't have to do her in stage. You could just use like you know Studio yeah. Canada, and they can just send yeah. it over. I know, but you know that's very expensive to do. I don't think they want to do that all the time. So <laughs> I, I don't know how expensive okay. it is. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, but, uh, the the, po- the ponies for their brief appearance made me like ponies Memorable. for like yeah. one, one episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's all you need. Good job. Uh, yeah, it's it not not enough to get me to look for My Little Pony, but you know, but, it, it, it was the, well, enough one thing, exposure. One thing they didn't have. One thing it had that MLP doesn't in terms of the clothing. I like their their clothes. Their hat. They look so cool, so stylish too. Did they have clothes? I mean, yes. I mean, they uh, they, they, they made a joke. Ju- they made a joke about them having clothes, but I don't remember what clothes they were wearing. I don't think they. Wait, they... let me check now. Yeah, the, the, were they wearing the Scottish golf hats? They, yeah, they, they I think they would have been wearing hats, but that doesn't count as clothes to me. That's just like a, a head covering. But they look very cool in that. I like that. Okay, I'm yes, I've confirmed they're only wearing yeah, hats. Do hats, hats count as they clothes? They don't have any clothes. <laughs> no, I don't think hats count as clothes. <laughs> I think that's really stretching the definition of, of clothes, Alex. Do you think shoes are clothes? Well, I You're like mean, the inverse of hats. Well, it gets, they're sold in the same place as well, clothing stores. Well, you go so. tell Louie that. He, he, Louie's the one who said they were in clothes, so... Yeah, okay, so th- this will be the hot topic to leave <laughs> our episode with. Please let us know in the comments. Are hats clothes? Are and hats are clothes? shoes clothes? There's yeah. only one right answer. Yeah, the answer is yes. Yeah. Uh, no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you had, you had 50% chance getting it right, Alex, and you picked the wrong one. <laughs> Well, uh, let, let us know your your thoughts on on this very controversial topic, uh, mm-hmm. as well as your thoughts on other characters in this episode. Like, uh, if you have any Duckworth theories <laughs> worth throwing out there, we'll be free to to hear them out. Um, you can find our previous discussions uh, on Ducktales and other animated shows we cover here at OverlyAnimated.com. You can join us on Discord. If you want to chat with us, we have a Ducktales channel there as well, uh, as, along with the channels with every other animated show we cover here at overlyanimated.com slash discord you can support us via patreon at patreon.com slash overly animated thanks to all of our current patrons especially our patron of the podcast taylor aka needle 
And thanks as always to our Patreon executive producers, John, Ryan, Steve, Andy, and Hugh. Uh, we just put out an OKKO OK podcast fairly recently, mm-hmm. so if you want to hear our thoughts on the, the most recent episodes there, you can see that. And to check out the rest of Orly Animated for other animated shows we'll be covering here. Mm. And well, uh, I just, yeah, well, I just, oh, I just have one more question for the viewers. Who's cuter, Dendy or Webby? Uh, yeah, I guess that's, a, that's a crossover <laughs> question okay. to ask. Uh, I'm just uh, trying, trying to pad out some time here. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to pad out time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not uh, that uh, I don't know how many people actually watch uh, listen to our OKKO OK and DuckTales podcast, yeah, but I, I will say I, I will say that Dendy wins this in a landslide. But that, that's just my opinion. <laughs> um, but but yeah, un- until we get n- another batch of the DuckTales episodes, probably in in another two weeks, we'll be here to talk about the latest two episodes. But until then, uh, we thank you guys for listening, and we'll see you soon. Adios. Okay. Bye. Bye.